so far, our performance three recommendations have focused on maximizing airflow. We've chosen the right size compressor to produce optimal CFM, as well as a large enough bull air hose to convey this flow to your blast pot. However, one of the natural consequences of using any air compressor is they produce hot, moist air. If we were simply using this air to operate machinery and hand tools, that might be fine, but our air is needed to smash abrasive onto a steel surface for the purpose of removing coatings and or rust. Therefore, having a system that does not remove this hot, moist air is going to reduce your performance by 15% and is not optimal for the following reasons. When moisture combines with the dry abrasive, it causes abrasive clumping and puts moisture and water through all your blast spot components. Now, this has three distinct impacts. First, when compressed air enters the blast pot, moisture that is entrapped in the air falls out, causing the abrasive to clump. An optimally functioning blast pot is supposed to gently dispense the media by gravity, like sand inside an hourglass, where the abrasive naturally falls through the metering valve and into the blast line. Introduce moisture, however, and the abrasive behaves like wet sand and clogs the vessel's lower cone, preventing the media from dropping into the lower blast line. This means the abrasive flow becomes inconsistent, sputtering, and when moisture buildup continues to increase, the abrasive will cease flowing completely until the blaster or pot tender chokes the pot. Choking the pot is a very common practice on job sites because it's such a quick and easy workaround to the clumping problem. This simply means they partially close the ball valve on the pusher line to increase the positive pressure inside the blast pot. This forces the abrasive through the metering valve. Doing so not only wears out your metering valve prematurely because the abrasive is no longer flowing just under gravity, but increases your abrasive flow higher than necessary. This waste hits your profitability in two ways. You spend more to buy additional abrasive as well as pay more in cleanup and disposal of the wasted surplus. The third issue with moisture is the impact of adding moisture to the steel surface that we're trying to clean. The moisture from an air compressor will often make a steel surface flash rust prematurely within two hours, contaminating the very surface that you're trying to clean. So now, understand that we must remove the moisture from our compressed air. The question now becomes, well, what is the best method to accomplish this? Many contractors wrongly believe general industry moisture traps installed on a blast pot's inlet air valve does the job. However, while these moisture separators remove the incoming droplets of moisture, it does nothing for moisture at the vapor level, which will condense in the blast pot and in the blast hose itself. We do recommend that all blast pots have a moisture separator designed for blasting. You know, not a general industry moisture trap as they are not designed for the volume of air and typically block up and cause a pressure drop, wasting the efficiencies you are trying to gain. As a reminder, in a previous video, we also warned against inbuilt compressor aftercoolers, which also claim to remove moisture from the compressed air. We found these can lower your pressure up to 15 PSI, and that's a 22% drop in efficiency. To actually remove the moisture vapor generated from the compressor, you need to use an air prep which uses an aftercooler to cool the air by 20 degrees and then a large expansion tank to enable all the moisture to be stripped out. It's the air prep that will give you trouble-free blasting by giving you cool, dry air to blast with, which decreases your abrasive consumption by at least 10 to 20%. A contractor once told us an air prep is just as important as the blast pot to take to your job sites. In areas of extreme moisture or climates where it freezes in winter, we recommend using a deliquescent desiccant air dryer, where the desiccant tablets absorb an additional 5% more moisture and will resist freezing up. I hear a lot of people say, hey, I've got an air dryer, and that could mean a lot of different things. They could be saying they have an air dryer because the compressor has an aftercooler, or they could be saying they have an air dryer because the, uh, the rental company gave them this little skid-mounted radiator. So an air dryer means different things to different people, depending on what your experience is. Some manufacturers produce a what's called an after-cooler style air dryer, which is simply cooling the air and coalescing the moisture, which is more common in the south. Whereas in the, in the north, where we get uh, cooler weather and 
um, more temperature swings, we would typically use what's called a deliquescent air dryer, which still has that radiator after calling to cool the air, but puts it through a bed of salt tablets to remove the moisture. So the difference in these different air dryers is it's massive. So if you think about an after caller on a compressor, for example, you have the air going through the after caller, which is drawing air from the compressor housing or through the compressor housing to cool the air. So it's only ever going to cool the air as, as cold as the air is inside the compressor housing. As soon as it exits the compressor, more moisture is going to form because it's going to be a cooler ambient temperature outside of the compressor. So as soon as it hits your blast pot, you're going to get moisture. One of the telltale signs whether your dryer is working effectively is if you see a black shadow after you blast. That's obviously moisture coming through. And even in the driest state like Arizona, you would be amazed how much moisture you'll pull out of the air with a proper air dryer. Now, so far we've optimized the first three components of your blasting setup and that projected efficiency gains as high as 25%. And we're only getting started on the success our Performance 3 strategy delivers. The tips so far have each been associated with the faster and cleaner aspects of our faster, safer, cleaner promise. Next up, however, we're going to improve the safety of your system with an actual human life being the potential value this recommendation protects.